Welcome back to today's tutorial and today's video is going to be all about skin tone color correction and I've had so many of you guys messaging me and emailing me about doing a skin tone color correction video and I really would love to do uh, a series of these videos and I do want to ask you guys whether you'd be interested in seeing me retouch someone with darker skin and then maybe someone with paler skin just to kind of like see and compare the differences and how you would approach with retouching in those situations. I do feel like I think it would be worth doing a series of these videos on skin tone color correction because I don't think it's usually just a one step fix. There's usually a series of steps that I will take when I'm editing my photos to get them looking um, better in terms of skin tone color and I do think it is kind of a process that needs to be done sometimes so I'm going to show you guys today what I would usually do standardized in in this situation and uh, go through some of the steps quite quickly with you so this is basically what my images look like once I've done the dodging and burning on the skin tone so you can see I've got my dodge and burn layers here and I've got the background copy layer as well so all of the retouching on the skin tone has been done on those layers up until this point and this is what the result is so usually at this point, I'm looking to bring back a little bit more texture into the skin and a little bit more depth. And usually the way that I would do this is by using adjustment layers. And I do this for most of my editing techniques overall. But generally I would go straight to a black and white layer. And this is really gonna help bring out the texture in the skin and the depth, although it is gonna change the toning of the skin tone and it's not usually for the better. We will have to correct that afterwards. But I'm going to click on black and white and I'll show you guys what I mean by bringing back that depth. We're going to straight away change the blending mode over here in the drop down menu to luminosity for the black and white layer. So you can see that there's not too much of a difference that's been made there. But what we are going to do is we're going to work on the reds and the yellows because they're the two main colors that are going to be prominent in the skin tone. So if we click on the reds first and we drag this slider down. You can see that it really creates a little bit more depth and texture within the skin tone. It will darken those little freckles and even the pores, it will make them stand out a little bit more. Her skin looks a little bit shinier. So we're just going to bring that right kind of down to around here, I'd say. And then with the yellow slider, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move that down to around, I'd say 31. So obviously looking at that skin tone now, we definitely need to change that. It's casting a lot of orange onto the image. And also with the lighting in studio or wherever you might be, color balance does play a part in getting the right kind of skin tone look. Although in this situation, we did have a slightly orange cast anyway. So we are gonna try and get rid of that now. So I'm gonna click on the black and white layer and click on the eye and you can see how much depth that's created in the skin tone already. It's really deepened up certain areas on the shadowed side of her face and just on the, the highlighted side, it's made them pop out a lot more, which is what we want. We want the highlights to really stand out in this particular image. So what I'm gonna straight away do to help soften all of that orange tone is I'm gonna create another black and white layer. But this time I'm going to leave it as black and white and change the opacity on it. And we're gonna bring the slider straight down, right down to around, usually at 12% is where I like to leave the black and white layer. We might adjust that maybe just to 10% for now though. And you can see the difference that that's made just by switching that on and off and it's really muted that orange tone. Although there is still patches of orange in the skin tone. So to remove that again, but still keeping the depth from the black and white layer, we're going to add a selective color layer. So this one just down the bottom. And then once again, we're going to be working with the magentas and the yellows to help sort of draw out that color from the image and get more of a muted effect with the skin tone. Because usually I do find that saturation plays an issue in skin tone color correction before we've even really edited the photo and gone into color correction, it's a bit of an issue with, with having a lot of orange casts and that's kind of what we don't want. And I think the really important thing is to always look at editorials and fashion magazines if you're doing beauty and fashion and look at how the skin tones look in those images. A lot of the time they are desaturated and they've sort of been tinted a certain way. 
So anyway, back to the selective color layer, we're going to drag the magentas down. And then we're also going to drag the yellows down and we're going to drag them both down until we sort of get to a point with them that looks fairly neutral, which is probably around about maybe there. So I'm going to click the eye on that and you can see that's really drawn out the orange look with this particular skin tone at the moment. So another way that I like to do color correction and color grading is by using luminosity masks. Now I'm not going to go through a huge tutorial today on luminosity masks because I do feel like that deserves its own video. They are a little bit more um, in depth, not necessarily complicated, but I do want to explain them properly and I don't feel like it's maybe a good idea to do it all in this tutorial. So I'm going to focus on that in another video, but briefly right now I'm going to show you what a luminosity mask can do for the skin tone color correction. So if you go over to your channels tab and you can see you've got your different channels here and you've got the RGB channel just here. Usually I would start off by doing a basic luminosity mask and this will affect the highlights of the image by going control or command and then clicking on the RGB layer. So you have to hold down control as you do this. And then you'll see that the selections popped up on the highlights and the most brightest parts of the skin tone. Then I'll go back to layers and I'm going to bring up levels. And this is really just affecting the brightness of the image at the moment. We're just gonna bring up the skin tone to be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna move the highlights just over to where the graph starts getting a little bit more brighter. And we'll just have a look at the mid-tones too. We'll bring those up just a little bit to help brighten the skin tone that little bit more. And that's really helped bring out the highlights even more. It was looking a little bit flat before. So if we turn off the eye, you can see that it is looking a little bit dark, a little bit muted and a bit flat. But we do want to have that bit of contrast that comes into the image um, by using the levels layer. So what you saw me just do was basically creating a luminosity mask, but I'm going to go into that much further in depth in another video. And I really hope you guys will be able to understand it like in, in a better way. And I hopefully can simplify it a little bit more for you. But that's generally how I would create a luminosity mask. And they are basically taking parts of the image, the midtones, highlights and shadows and helping them to to stand out more, to pop out more, and making them individual parts of the image that you can work on. So next thing we're gonna do is move on to more of the color correction. Now, a lot of this does stem from the fact that I used a black and white layer and I was quite heavy in how I applied those uh, settings initially, but if you don't apply them heavy enough with a black and white layer, it's not adding enough depth sometimes. So I do feel like it's kind of an important thing to do initially, and then you can kind of work on getting the right skin tone afterwards, but still retaining that depth in the image. So the next thing I'm going to do is move over to the adjustment layers again, and this time we're going to go to color balance. So it's still looking a little bit too warm for my liking. So I think in the mid-tone section, we're going to move this slider here over to the blue, and this is gonna add a little bit more blue into the image, just to kind of make it a little bit less warm. And we might try the cyan as well, just slightly moving it over towards that direction. And then I think we're gonna to go to the shadows. And this is only going to be affecting the shadows of the image, whereas the other one was affecting the midtones. We're just gonna move that over to the blue side as well, just to kind of give it a little bit of a cooler effect. So this is all dependent on the photo and the mood that you're trying to create in your photo. Some people might like to have their photos a little bit warmer and the skin tones a bit warmer. Um, but I tend to desaturate them a little bit. I think it adds that little bit more of a professional touch and a little bit more of an editorial look. So I'm going to go to highlights now. And we might go a little bit more pink. That looks pretty good at the moment. So we're going to just click that on and off and I'll show you what that's done. It's just given it a little bit more of a cooler toned effect on the skin tone. So we're just adding a few more colors in there to sort of counteract that overly warm look. 
The next thing I'm going to do is bring up a curves layer and we're just going to brighten that whole skin tone and the image overall because it is looking a little bit too dark and shadowy in places. So before we use the levels to bring out the highlights, but using curves as an adjustment layer, we can really just lift the entire exposure of the image just that little bit more. So we'll click on curves and we're just going to move this bar up a little bit more, probably to about there. And mark another point just about there on the image. So you can see just by putting on curves, that's kind of allowed the image to become that little bit brighter. And if we click off the levels layer, that's really bringing out the highlights of the image and using that luminosity mask will really help with that. So the next thing we're going to do, and it should be probably the final step in my color grading process for skin tones, is going down to the adjustment layers again, and we're going to add a vibrance layer. Now vibrance is a little bit different to desaturating. And what we did before with the black and white layer, the second black and white layer, was really add that black and white look to the image and desaturate the image. But with Vibrance, we're just going to take away that really vibrant warmth look that's still kind of hanging around in the image and just bring those colors down a bit to more of a muted color. So we're going to maybe, I think probably put it down to around, usually around minus seven seems to be a really good number for a lot of my images. Um, it seems to be just a really good marker for skin tones as well. So. Minus seven is what I'm going to leave that as, and then we're going to click on the eye and you can see what that's done to the skin tone. It's just really made it this really nice shine and still kind of keeping the, the tone and the depth to the, the shadows, but really just kind of desaturating too much warmth and too much orange out of the photo. So now I'm going to show you guys a quick before and after of what we've actually done to the image. So the original image that we started off with looked like this. And then this is what we have color graded the skin tone to. So you can see there's a lot more depth and texture in the skin tone, as well as a lot more of a muted coloring. I think it's really important to remember not to lighten the skin tone. You don't want to lighten the skin tone. You don't want to change the person's skin tone or color. It's just removing that saturation, that over saturation that tends to come with a lot of um, beauty portraits and, and things like that. And sometimes it's hard to get the right white balance. And this is where skin tone color correction really does come into post-processing. So as you can see, there's probably a few little patches just that I can see in the image, um, just like here. And I know I'm being a little bit picky with this, but I can sort of see that that is a bit of an issue. So if there's any spot coloring that you do need to work on, I would usually create just a new layer. And then I would go over to the paintbrush and just with a soft brush at around 1% flow, I'd make it a little bit bigger and just hold down alt on the keyboard and so you've got the eyedropper. I'd click somewhere else near that patch, so around here for the color matching and then I would just start to paint over that area. So we're sort of like just masking that at the moment. I'm just painting over that area. It doesn't have to be too heavy or too light, just somewhere in the middle. And then we're going to change the blending mode of the layer to color. So you can see if I click the eye on that on and off, it's really hard to see, but you can actually tell by looking close that it adds more of a pink tone to that. You can also brighten it up a little bit, but usually I just like to use that method of using color to kind of match it in a little bit more. Color's usually the best uh, blending mode for that particular technique. So I'll give you guys a final before and after now. So this is the original image and this is what we've brought the skin tone to now. So obviously this is a very stylized type of skin toning and this is more of a personal way that I like to use adjustment layers in terms of toning my images and toning skin. Um, however, there's lots of different ways to do this in Photoshop and you don't necessarily have to do it this way if that's not really your style. Uh, you don't have to use the luminosity masks. You can keep the image a little bit more muted, a little bit flatter. You don't have to use too much brightness and you can use different 
adjustment layers in terms of color balance and selective color to achieve the same results. So this is generally just the steps that I like to take when I'm doing skin tones in particular. And I think the main layers to kind of look out for are probably the black and white layer that I initially used, and then just kind of using some of those desaturation techniques to get rid of the real orange saturated look in the images. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like a bit more of a series on skin tone color correction, I can definitely try my best to uh, bring that out for you. It, it might take a little bit longer for me to get that out because I am trying to work on this particular series with beauty retouching at the moment, but I definitely would like to have that in the works if you guys are interested and do a few different retouching methods on a few different skin tones so you can see more of an overview of how it can be done. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what else you wanna see on my channel. I will be bringing out more of a color grading tutorial in general very soon. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you wanna see on my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye.